SpaceX has never revealed this. They're expanding the Starship facility in Florida into a second Starbase city, a move that could soon put serious pressure on neighboring space companies like ULA, Boeing, and even Blue Origin once Starship launches begin ramping up. Recently, their ambition became even clearer when major breakthroughs were spotted at LC-39A, proving that the path to Mars is closer than ever. So, what exactly are these breakthroughs, and when will everything be fully operational? Let's find out in today's episode of Alpha Tech. When it comes to Elon Musk's dream of conquering Mars, many people dismiss it as pure madness, an almost impossible feat given the enormous technical and financial hurdles. But for Musk, now sitting on a net worth of around $500 billion, it's a completely different story. He doesn't just dream, he acts. The clearest proof? The rapid expansion of the Starship program, SpaceX's symbol of its multi-planet ambition. It's not stopping at Starbase in Texas, where Pad 2 is expected to be completed by the end of this year. Musk is also pouring tens of billions of dollars into Florida's infrastructure. After ULA ended its lease at Space Launch Complex 37 last year, SpaceX began tearing down the old structures in June 2025, turning the site into Starship's fourth launch pad. Meanwhile, the third pad at Kennedy Space Center's Launch Complex 39A is where we're seeing the most striking progress. Not only is SpaceX upgrading the site with advanced technologies, but they're also building a massive gigabay to support the intense launch schedule planned for the near future. With these upgrades, LC-39A is quickly becoming the hub of Florida operations, setting the stage for a flurry of Starship activity in the months ahead. Before we get into the newest upgrades, let's rewind a bit. Back in 2022, SpaceX built the first orbital launch mount for Starship at LC-39A, using a six-legged design based on Starbase's Pad-1. But early testing at Pad-1 quickly revealed its flaws, especially in handling the extreme heat and force of Super Heavy. So, by 2024, SpaceX scrapped that approach and shifted to a more advanced design, inspired by Pad-2. Since then, construction has been racing ahead. Crews dug out the old mount to carve a massive flame trench, reinforced it with steel, and poured the first layers of concrete. Then, just a few days ago, two giant flame buckets were hoisted into place, critical pieces of the trench that will channel the rocket's exhaust. With the flame buckets secured, the next stage will be installing the ridge cap to protect the structure, followed by the legs of the orbital launch mount. By September 13th, three out of four legs were already in place. For reference, at Starbase's Pad B, once the fourth leg was finally installed, it took about 19 days to complete the OLM. That means the real countdown at LC-39A won't begin until the last leg is set. And given that progress here has been slower, the overall timeline could stretch a little longer. Once all four legs are secured, the next steps will involve pouring concrete for the access ramps and completing the rest of the OLM foundation. After that, Crews are expected to install the propellant lines feeding into the quick disconnect arms, the lifelines that deliver fuel to both the booster and the ship. The process continues with integrating the water deluge system, connecting the LOX and methane pipelines through the commodities trench, and finally running full-scale integrated tests. These checks are critical to confirm that the entire system can withstand the enormous thrust of Super Heavy. Based on the current pace and lessons learned from Pad B, it may take another one to two months to finish the flame trench system and bring the pad online, depending, of course, on weather and scheduling. That's just one upgrade spotted so far. What's even more exciting is the progress on building the Gigabyte. Just last week, fresh images from LC-39A revealed something striking. The Florida Gigabay is rising fast, even faster than its counterpart at Starbase. From above, you can clearly see the foundation has already been completed, with some massive concrete slabs poured over an enormous area. This will be the interior footprint of the Gigabay once it's finished. And the infrastructure is now going vertical. Construction has already begun on the facility's central wall, rising quickly skyward. All around the site, you can spot piles of steel beams neatly staged in sections, ready to be assembled piece by piece. In the middle, several aerial work platforms are positioned around the construction area, while rows of rebar dowels have been set in place. 
marking where columns will soon rise to anchor the structure and support its walls. At the center, a towering crane perched on a tall truss is lifting those massive steel members into position. The scene looks chaotic at first glance, but in reality, it's impressively well organized. Each zone has its own dedicated task, a sign of just how professional the crews are and how fast progress is being made. It won't be long before this empty construction site is covered by towering walls. According to filings submitted to the FAA in January 2025, Construction officially kicked off in April. The timeline is ambitious. The foundation and steel framework are expected to be wrapped up by the end of 2025. Cranes and interior systems will go in by early 2026, and testing and trial operations should follow by mid-2026. If all goes to plan, the Gigafactory will be completed by late 2026. Some documents even point to August, though SpaceX prefers to keep it flexible with a simple end of 2026. The project comes with a massive $1.8 billion price tag, but it also promises around 600 new full-time jobs for the Space Coast. Digging a little deeper, the Gigabay isn't actually right at LC-39A. It's about 5 to 7 kilometers away. That's close enough to quickly transport Starship and Super Heavy stages, but far enough to reduce risks from launch failures or accidents. And once completed, this will be nothing short of a modern engineering marvel. Standing 116 meters tall, slightly shorter than NASA's legendary vehicle assembly building, just a few kilometers away, Gigabay doesn't need to compete on height. Instead, it's designed to become the new icon of the Kennedy Space Center, a place where starships can be assembled at unprecedented speed and efficiency. The scale is jaw-dropping, with a floor area of 815,000 square feet. It's more than 11 times larger than the megabays at Starbase, Texas. Looking at the construction images, you might already get a sense of its size. But once finished, the interior will be so vast it could fit a small town, or dozens of football fields under one roof. That enormous footprint translates into 46.5 million cubic feet of interior volume, essentially creating a universe indoors. On the ground floor and its elevated platforms, engineers and robots will move in perfect rhythm, stacking stainless steel rings into starship hulls, installing Raptor engines, and weaving in the complex systems that bring these spacecraft to life. Instead of the five to 10 bays found in a mega bay, Gigabay will host up to 30 specialized workstations, a dense grid of activity where multiple starships and super heavy boosters can take shape at the same time. Towering overhead, Cranes with a 400-ton lifting capacity will glide across the hull, powerful enough to hoist an entire super-heavy booster without disassembly. And above it all, on the upper floors, a sleek command center will overlook the vast production floor, tying every process here directly to SpaceX's headquarters in Hawthorne, California. With its massive scale, the Gigabay isn't just another factory. It's a machine built to supercharge the entire Starship program. This is the launch pad for Elon Musk's ambition to hit between 100 and 365 flights every year from both Texas and Florida. With 24 to 30 parallel work bays, the facility can handle up to a dozen starships or super heavy boosters at the same time, from stacking the first steel rings to installing Raptor engines, testing systems, and getting them flight ready. At the current mega bay, only two or three vehicles can be built at once. Gigabay doubles that output, doubles crane capacity, and slashes production timelines from months down to just weeks. A brand new Super Heavy could be completed in as little as two to four weeks, and when combined with true mass production, Musk's target of 1,000 starships a year suddenly doesn't sound so far-fetched. Here in Florida alone, Gigabay is expected to roll out 50 to 100 vehicles every year supporting both NASA contracts and commercial customers. And with that, Elon Musk's dream of reaching Mars edges closer than ever before. Meanwhile, Blue Origin just had its own moment on September 26th, proudly giving reporters a rare tour of the New Glenn Heavy Lift Rocket Factory on Merritt Island. A company official bragged that the giant blue building stretches the length of two and a half Statues of Liberty and is wider than Cinderella's castle at Walt Disney World if laid on its side. Inside the 750,000 square foot facility, 
slightly smaller than SpaceX's 815,000 square foot gigabay, scissor lifts, scaffolding, heavy duty transporters, and toolkits are scattered across the floor. Blue Origin even claimed it's the most impressive rocket factory in Florida. Well, that was before they realized what SpaceX is building next door. Because SpaceX isn't just putting up one gigabyte, they're building two. The Texas site has already poured its foundation and is preparing to go vertical. And once both are online, together with the Star Factory, SpaceX's Starship production capacity will be at least five times larger than Blue Origin's. More importantly, with four active launch pads, SpaceX could be flying 10 to 15 times more often than New Glenn, which, as of now, only has one pad at Launch Complex 36. Blue Origin has talked about adding a second at SLC-9, but that's still just a plan on paper, with no construction even started. Overall, SpaceX's plan to ramp up Starship launches out of k at c and Cape Canaveral, with a target of 44 to 76 flights per year, could bring enormous benefits not just to the company, but to Florida's Space Coast as well. Thousands of new jobs are expected by 2030. Tourism and the local economy will get a major boost, and the region could soon become the busiest rocket hub in the world. But not everyone is thrilled. Neighbors like ULA and Blue Origin worry about the wide safety zones and potential launch disruptions, pointing to environmental impacts such as noise, vibrations, and pollution risks that could affect both workers and nearby communities. In Blue Origin's case, more delays to New Glenn development could also be on the line. While they haven't taken legal action, the company has urged the FAA to cap SpaceX's launch frequency and impose stricter mitigation measures, framing it as a fight for fairness and safety across the Space Coast. Elon Musk, unsurprisingly, sees it differently, calling this nothing more than an attempt to hold SpaceX back. After all, disputes between the two companies are nothing new, and so far, Blue Origin has yet to win a single one. As it stands, the FAA is expected to wrap up its review and issue the license by the end of 2025, provided mitigation steps are in place. If that happens, it would mark yet another setback for Blue Origin in this ongoing rivalry.